Hello Alex, thanks for coming over here. Uh, welcome to Seoul. <laughs> thanks Doc, it's nice to be here. So let's start with, could you please introduce yourself? Okay, I'm uh, Alex Britton and I'm a visitor to South Korea. Uh, I work over here uh, and I'm from the United States and uh, I work as an industrial hygienist, which is uh, an allied medical profession, so. Mm. Okay, so may I ask you how we first met? So in the meantime, you had a history, came over to my office, right? So could you please tell me, uh, in your point of view, how it happened? Sure, and if I get long, tell me. <laughs> I actually uh, had the surgery hmm. uh, long ago, uh, back in uh, 2010, and my uh, prosthetic stopped working, mm -hmm. and I accepted a job in South Korea, mm -hmm. and uh, the prosthetic uh, stopped working right before I started over here. So we had surgery to replace one right before I uh, traveled over here. And when I got over here, uh, it actually opened up and mm. uh, uh, failed. And uh, um, so I needed medical attention immediately. <laughs> They sent me to a local uh, hospital, uh, mm. had a very good doctor, but he was not um, uh, aware of what the problem could be uh, because it kept, uh, the nature of the uh, problem was it kept, uh, it was opening up. Okay, so uh, in short, uh, you had an original penile prosthesis and it worked well for about five years, right? Just about, yes. Yeah, five years, and uh, and then it had a mechanical failure, I would yes. say. After yes. that, you had a revision surgery in the U.S., and right after that, you came over to South Korea, but the scrotal incision wasn't healing well. So yes. you visited a local uh, urologist, but uh, after a several trial, it didn't work well. So he recommended you to coming over to me, yes. to my practice. Yes. Okay. What I want to ask you another thing is that how you felt uh, in the beginning and after you had a prosthetic, I mean, uh, penile prosthesis and after it stopped working and then it got infected and then you now have it working it well. How did your emotion well, change it? You know, uh, we men are supposed to be strong and uh, never complain and uh, when we're met with something that's emotional we kind of close down but uh, when you lose your ability to um, get an erection mm -hmm. that's that's your manhood that's who you are and if you're unable to do that for whatever reason it uh, takes something away from you and I was depressed I was depressed because you know I uh, the way it uh, happened was I basically uh, injured it and uh, had to have the prosthetic uh, put in 
uh, in order to maintain an erection. And uh, so I was really depressed. And uh, when I got the original uh, unit in, it wasn't, you know, it was in place for a short time and it, it wasn't, um, it wasn't put in by an expert, but uh, <laughs> but it you know it it was I was able to get an erection and uh, I was able to please my wife mm -hmm. and you know that's one of the big things that mm. we've not talked about is mm. I was depressed mm -hmm. but my wife you oh. know you know she got into a marriage to be with me and mm -hmm. and I couldn't uh, do what I you know to. Mm fulfill my obligation as the, the man. Anyway, so uh, we, she was glad that I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, then when I, when it stopped working, that was, uh, <laughs> that was disastrous because mm. you certainly don't, you know, although uh, your surgery was probably easier than uh, some of the others that uh, I'd had, uh, or one of the others that I'd had. Um, you really don't like being worked on, you know. Nobody likes being opened mm. up and mm. and uh, ha having surgery. So mm. it was not something I was looking forward to, but it failed, and uh, I'm uh, I found somebody to replace it. But uh, the two doctors in the U.S. that I went to, they did not have extensive experience like Dr. Uh, Park. He, uh, one of them had uh, done two insertions in uh, two years, and another had done maybe one in the last year. And they just, um, I, I didn't get the, I didn't get a sense of confidence in them, although they're very good doctors, they're very good urologists, uh, they just did not have that specialty. And when I got to Dr. Park, it was a whole different story. And uh, it's, uh, it's nice to be uh, taken care of by a, uh, a, a world uh, famous <laughs> urologist uh, that specializes in this because uh, he knew exactly what the problem was. Uh, when I went to the local South Korean uh, hospital, uh, the doctor uh, had some real difficulty trying to figure out what it was, but he described the symptoms to Dr. Park, and Dr. Park immediately knew what the situation was, and uh, I, I went to see him, and. Uh, we had a kind of a long situation where a couple of yeah so in short you had uh, a desperate feeling not just because you couldn't have an erection back but because you have your own relationship with your wife which means a lot to you but uh, not just you but your wife as well was depressed because of this I'll say a minor health issues. But now, as you get it back, you feel way better. I believe not just because of you can have now intercourses, but in terms of a, a man uh, in a whole, you know, as a whole said, we should, whom we should be, you get it back, what you had to have. Am I right? Yeah, I, it's like, um, it's kind of like a, a, you know, a female when uh, you hear that they've lost uh, the ability to have children or, mm. you know, they've had to have some part of their body removed mm. because mm. of uh, something you lose yourself and mm. it's 
it's the same way with a uh, with a male. Uh, mm. You know, you you know, I I did not have this surgery so that I could uh, uh, go out and um, have sex with everybody <laughs> that I found. It, that's that's not who I am. I'm monogamous mm. with mm. my wife, mm. uh, but. Uh, you know, the fact that I couldn't even uh, do that was uh, very depressing. And, mm. uh, you know, even even now, my wife is not with me. She's back in the States. But, mm. uh, you know, um, just to know that one, if they wanted to do something about it, they mm. could do something about it. I am of the belief I won't do that, but just knowing that somebody finds you attractive and you're able to do something about it if you chose to, it gives you a, sen a, a bigger sense of uh, comfort in yourself. And mm. I don't know how to say it eloquently like <laughs> some people do, but, uh, you know, I have it back and, uh, you know, I'm, it, it wasn't just to have an erection. It's basically I'm uh, able to again and, uh, and I'm sure my wife is uh, happy too. So far, I've seen uh, not uh, almost all men didn't have this surgery to flirt out or to have you know aggressive sexual behaviors. No, they just wanted it back because it is what they should have. For example, when the woman has a mastectomy because of their breast cancer majority of them will get a reconstruction. Why? Do they want to flirt out? No. Do they want to feed their baby? They can't. But because they have to have it to be a woman. In my eyes, the same happened to you as well. Um, very, then. very well put. <laughs> More eloquently than I did. That's absolutely... So, uh, lastly, uh, for those who suffer in silence, they can't, you know, being a man, like you said, we have to be strong, we have to hold our feelings, hold our, you know, necessities, or hold our, you know, desires, right? But those who suffer in silence, uh, as who has a erectile dysfunction, but suffers or who do not know what to do, do you have any recommendation or to tell them to to help them well that's that's kind of why I agreed to do mm. this is uh, you know talking about ones is not real comfortable to talk about one's mm. uh, own situation but uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, people out there that uh, you know they they should uh, talk to their medical professionals uh, and uh, they'll not only improve their own outlook on life, but uh, their family. You know, if you, you know, if you lose uh, some process in your body and you're not whole, uh, it, it not only affects you, but it affects your family and your, your loved ones. So, you know, do yourself a favor and do your loved ones a favor and, uh, you know, uh, seek this out. and. Uh, I'm just fortunate that I ran into one of the foremost uh, uh, implant surgeons here in South Korea. Um, and uh, I must say that uh, anybody that comes see you, Doc, is, <laughs> is quite lucky because you do it all the time and you're, you're very familiar with it. So I'm being honest and you probably don't like me saying that, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's true. You're, you're, doing a, you're, you're helping a lot of people. Well, thank you for promoting me. <laughs> and at the same time, thank you for your bravery. I've seen a lot of patients who know that they want to share their stories, but they fear that telling this in public may be a, a disgrace or, you know, they are kind of really not comfortable with a situation like this. Uh, but thanks for, I mean, uh, honesty and uh, bravery. I think many will benefit it uh, by uh, to get the help, to get the, I mean, courage again. I hope so, because if if we've helped one person, that's yeah. 
that's you know that's a lot of people to thank you doc thank you for being my patient alex as well <laughs> 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 <laughs>